Where will you be just moments after taking your final breath? Your soul will go into eternity. Are you ready for this? Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Since thou wast precious in my sight, I have loved thee. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions, and will not remember thy sins. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. God loves you. You may not believe that he exists, but it doesn't change the fact that God is real. His love for you is real, and he longs for you to spend eternity with him in heaven. The Bible teaches us that the Lord is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But what is truth? We live in a time filled with so much uncertainty, so many lies, so many false religions. But Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If ye continue in my word, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is, all of us are lost without Jesus Christ. No matter how successful our lives might be or how religiously engaged we are, if Jesus Christ is not my personal Savior, if He's not your personal Savior, we will die and perish, separated from God. Genuinely ask yourself in your heart, if I were to die right now, where will I go? Heaven or hell? If you're not 100% sure that heaven will be your home, there is hope because God comforts us in 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. When it's your time to leave this world, you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven. That's why I believe the Lord has given you the opportunity to watch this gospel film. He wants to share his love with you and he wants to show you the way of eternal salvation. The first thing we must understand is our sinful corruption. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We may consider ourselves to be pretty good compared to somebody else, but no one is perfect. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And the scripture hath concluded all under sin. No matter how hard we try, all of us fall short of the perfection and holiness of God. I'm a sinner, and you're a sinner. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Let's be honest with one another. We've all done bad things. We've all broken God's law. Whether it's telling a lie, being dishonest, stealing, cheating, taking the Lord's name in vain, thinking lustful thoughts, or being disobedient to our parents, just to name a few. Because of our sin, because we've broken God's law, there is a consequence, and it's a serious penalty. Just like a criminal must pay for his crime, a sinner must also pay for the debt of a sin. Secondly, we must accept the truth of our separated consequence. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 5.12 teaches us that death has come by sin, and death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. To die in our sins without Jesus Christ is to spend an eternity in hell. This is sobering news, but God's word is clear. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Maybe you're thinking, how could a God of love do this? The truth is, he doesn't want to, but he has to. Hell is a place of horrific pain and torment that God originally created for Satan and the fallen angels, a place where sin could be cast away from his sight for all of eternity. God never made hell for you and me. He made heaven for us. He says in John 14, 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. But no sin can be allowed into heaven. God is holy and perfect. Our own sins separate us from Him. Our own sins send us to hell. I believe that God in His love wrote Revelation 21.8 to make us stop and see what would happen to us if we died in our sins. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. That's why He willingly sent His Son, Jesus. Jesus came for you. He came because he loves you. Thirdly, we need to recognize our Savior's cross. The most famous Bible verse of all time is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God, was born of a virgin. He was born to die and take away the sins of the world. He lived 33 and a half sinless years, teaching and preaching truth. He touched the sick and made the lame to walk again. Many believed on him and were healed of their incurable diseases. But he was hated by the Pharisees and betrayed. They mocked and ridiculed him. They falsely accused him and convinced Pontius Pilate that he was worthy of death. Jesus was whipped mercilessly with the cat of nine tails, an instrument of torture that had bits of metal and stone woven into its leather strips. But he endured all of the suffering and agony because of his love for us. They made a crown of thorns and pressed it down into a skull. They cried out, crucify him, crucify him. But this was all a part of God's loving plan of salvation. Jesus courageously went up Mount Calvary outside of Jerusalem and was nailed to an old rugged cross. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. He willingly gave himself as a sacrifice and shed his blood to take our punishment and rescue us from hell. It was my sins and yours that nailed him to that tree. And I believe there was a specific moment as he hung there on the cross when he literally thought of you. He loved you, and he died for you. Three days later, he victoriously rose again from the grave, and now he offers salvation. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This, this is the good news. Through what Jesus did on the cross, God has a gift for you. It's eternal life with Him in heaven. Of course, a gift is something that's freely given out of love. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. If you did, it, it wouldn't be a gift. Someone else pays the price and then offers it to you. But you have a choice to make, to receive it or reject it. The gift that God offers you is eternal life in heaven. Eternal life can't be bought or earned by being baptized, giving money away, or going to church. There's no amount of good deeds that you could do to outweigh your bad and get you into heaven. It's only through Jesus. He's paid the price. God's Word plainly says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And Acts 4.12 proclaims, For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only Jesus. And now, now we have a simple choice. God promises in Romans 
for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, he stands in heaven with his arms open wide in love, waiting for you to come to him by faith and accept him as your personal savior. According to the Bible, if you were to receive Jesus Christ and his gift of salvation that he offers you, where will you go when you die? The exciting answer is heaven. But if you were to reject Christ and never accept what he did for you on the cross, where will you spend eternity? The sobering answer is hell. Right now, right now you have a choice, a personal decision to make. Why not call upon the Lord and ask him to save you? In this moment, I'm begging you, join with me in prayer. Of course, merely saying words will not save you, but sincerely calling out to Christ from your heart in a prayer of faith will. God is listening. Right now, would you bow your head and simply pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I deserve the penalty for my sins. But I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be with you in heaven. I believe you died on the cross and rose again for me. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. I gladly receive your gift of eternal life. I trust in you alone to be my Savior. Thank you, God, for your love and for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, did you just trust in Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior? Praise God. The Bible plainly teaches that you can never lose your salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not maybe or might be, but shall be. God has given you the promise of eternal life. For the Christian, death is now simply a transition from this life into the next. And Jesus gives assurance to all those who've trusted in him. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Your soul is safe in the almighty hands of Jesus Christ. If you prayed and trusted in him today, we would love to hear from you. Please contact us so we can rejoice with you. We'd be delighted to pray for you and help you with any questions that you may have as a Christian. God bless you. And please share this wonderful message of eternal salvation, of hope, with as many people as you possibly can.